Ever wondered why one slice of cheese melts into a smooth, gooey blanket, while another barely reacts to the heat at all? At its core, cheese melting is a delicate balance of proteins, fats, and moisture, shaped by how the cheese was made, aged, and structured long before it ever hit the pan. Let's dive into the science behind this delicious mystery and uncover why cheese melts differently by type, right here on History of Simple Things. At its core, cheese is surprisingly simple. It's made from milk proteins, milk fat, water and minerals, mostly calcium. The key players here are the proteins, especially casein, which form a network that traps fat and water. When milk is turned into cheese, enzymes and bacteria cause the casein proteins to clump together, forming curds. Those curds are pressed, aged, stretched, or cooked in different ways, and those choices determine the final structure of the cheese. That structure, how tightly proteins are linked, how much water is trapped, and how evenly fat is distributed, is what decides whether a cheese melts smoothly, turns stringy, or breaks apart when heated. Once heat is applied, that internal structure is put to the test. If the balance is right, the proteins loosen and let the cheese melt evenly. If not, the structure collapses, separating into oil, clumps, or rubbery strands. When cheese melts, it's not actually turning into a liquid like ice melting into water. What's really happening is that the protein network softens, allowing fat and moisture to flow more freely. As the heat increases, the bonds between proteins loosen. If the structure is just right, the cheese becomes smooth and stretchy. If the structure is too tight, too dry, or poorly balanced, the proteins clump together and squeeze out fat instead, leading to greasy puddles or rubbery textures. So melting is less about temperature and more about protein behavior. One of the biggest reasons cheeses melt differently is moisture content. High moisture cheeses, like mozzarella, fontina, or young cheddar, have more water trapped inside their protein networks. When heated, that water turns to steam and helps push proteins apart gently, allowing the cheese to melt smoothly. Low moisture cheeses, like parmesan, aged cheddar, or pecorino, have very little water left. Their proteins are packed tightly together, so when heated, there's nothing to help them relax. Instead of melting, they tend to harden or separate. That's why Parmesan doesn't melt into goo. It stays granular and sharp, perfect for grating but terrible for grilled cheese. Cheese proteins don't just float around randomly. They're held together by calcium bridges, which act like molecular glue. In cheeses with lots of calcium bonds, the protein network is rigid and resistant to heat. When heated, these proteins tighten instead of loosening, forcing fat out of the structure. That's why some cheeses turn oily when heated. Cheeses with fewer calcium bonds have a looser protein structure. Heat allows those proteins to slide past each other, creating that classic stretchy, melty texture. Fresh and lightly aged cheeses usually have fewer calcium bonds. Aged cheeses have more, and that makes them less cooperative in the melting department. Cheese age plays a massive role in how it melts. As cheese ages, enzymes slowly break down proteins and moisture evaporates. This concentrates flavors but also changes texture. The protein network becomes more fragmented yet more rigid overall, and water content drops significantly. That's why young cheddar melts beautifully, while extra sharp aged cheddar often breaks, leaks oil, or turns grainy. The same milk, same cheese, just a different stage of life. Age adds flavor, but it often steals meltability. Mozzarella deserves special attention because it melts so well 
that it's practically become the gold standard. Mozzarella is a pasta filata cheese, meaning the curds are heated and stretched during production. This stretching aligns the proteins into long, flexible strands. When heated again later, those strands loosen evenly, giving mozzarella its iconic stretch and smooth melt. It also has high moisture, balanced fat, and relatively low calcium bonding. In other words, it's engineered, accidentally or not, for melting perfection. That's why pizza without mozzarella feels wrong. Now let's talk about cheeses that simply refuse to cooperate. Cheeses like feta, halloumi, paneer, and queso fresco are designed not to melt. Their protein networks are heavily bonded with calcium or acid set rather than enzyme set, making them heat stable. Instead of melting, they soften slightly or brown on the outside while keeping their shape. This makes them perfect for grilling or frying, but useless if you're chasing gooey cheese pulls. They're not broken, they're just built differently. Fat matters, but not as much as people think. Fat contributes to creaminess and mouthfeel, but it doesn't guarantee good melting. A cheese can be high in fat and still melt poorly if the protein structure is too tight. However, low-fat cheeses almost always melt badly. With less fat to lubricate the protein network, the structure collapses unevenly when heated, resulting in rubbery textures or puddles of water. That's why low-fat cheese is great for nutrition labels, but not for pizza night. Processed cheese often gets a bad reputation, but from a melting perspective, it's a masterpiece. Processed cheeses contain emulsifying salts, which prevent proteins from clumping and help fat and water stay evenly mixed. These salts break calcium bonds and stabilize the protein network. The result? Cheese that melts smoothly every single time, no matter what. That's why American cheese melts like a dream while some real cheeses struggle. It may not be fancy, but it's scientifically reliable. So, why does cheese melt differently? It comes down to five main factors. Moisture content, protein structure, calcium bonding, age and heat application. Different cheeses balance these factors differently. And that balance determines whether cheese melts smoothly, stretches beautifully, or refuses entirely. Cheese isn't unpredictable. It's just obeying chemistry. Once you understand how cheese works, melting behavior stops being mysterious and starts being useful knowledge. Want gooey? Choose young, moist cheeses. Want structure? Use heat-stable varieties. Want consistency? Processed cheese has your back. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.